You've been listening to The Last of the Real podcast. Catch all the episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. No chill, don't try flex round me. Muscle get stretched round me. Small free nil, pass the pad. Don't act bad, but I'm bad when I feel. And still, it's like I'm the last of the real. It's like I'm the last of the real. No, I didn't know what to expect from it. Because, mm. like, they were just like, oh, we've seen your set. You, we know you chat shit about men. Great, perfect. I was like, oh, okay, could do that. Was it the same? It was the same. It was a similar role to um, crop circles, wasn't it? Kind why, of. Why do you always play like the angry, like the girlfriend or the mother? <laughs> I don't know why everyone thinks I have that vibe. To be fair, I feel like crop circle was more like I was his sister, and I just kind of thought it was a bit of a waste, man. Like you're still you're still selling drugs at this age. That yeah, was yeah, more yeah. of the vibe. Whereas Harry's one was like, I was the same. You're a waste, man. Yeah, it was the same. <laughs> it's pretty much the same, man. You know. Are we in? Getting typecasted. Cool. I've never been to these studios. I don't know why. It's proper rundown, isn't it? It looks proper ghetto. No, it's in, it's in like I feel like it's where all the studios are. Just in like a random warehouse looking. Yeah. It's all I would have picked the studio that's closer to you because there are pirate studios all all over London, right? <gasps> but the ones that are closest to you are always fully booked, and there's only one podcast room, and that gets booked up. Yeah. Clearly, there are other men who want to chat shit about women. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's the vibes. <laughs> That's what everyone's doing, man. That's what everyone's doing. Do you not think it's like bare saturated right now? What, for podcasts? Yeah. I think a lot of people should get their mics taken away, yeah. <laughs> you reckon? I'm so serious. Every time every time I see a clip of a man with a microphone, I hold my breath. Swear. Because nine times out of ten, you're chatting shit. Yeah, that's true. I think the last one I saw was a man complaining that he has to pay £100 a month for child support. £100? £100 for your child? No. I said, yeah, we're finished. Is that what we said on the pod? Yeah, he was like, I don't understand what a hundred pound. <laughs> the, 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 the court system is... <laughs> what? It's set up against men. A hundred pounds? <laughs> Big man, what? <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy, man. But I but I read an article recently and they were like, um, that it's going to die. Podcasting is going to die. I don't think it's going to die, you know, because I just think it's another... It's just another avenue that people have just discovered. So the same way radio hasn't died, mm. TV's still around. People don't really watch it anymore, but it's but still there. A girl asked me the other day at work. She was like, so what do you do in your spare time? I was actually shook to tell her that I do a bo- podcast. I swear to God. It's because of exactly because of what you said. Because like, it's so saturated for the mandem. So I'm just like, oh. I was like, yeah, I do podcasting. And she's like, oh, so what? Like, do you draw people out? Do you like, what? Do you chat shit? I'm like, oh, who should split the bill sort of thing? I'm like, no, 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 no. no but every t- I don't understand why that's still a conversation as well. Mm. It's a big conversation. Why? I was just about to ask you as well. Who just split the bill? I'm not a split the bill babe, but I'm not like. I'll, I'll usually I'll do that. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or go to. Oh, I'm gonna quickly go to the toilet. No, I'll never go to the toilet. <laughs> I'll never. I'll never violate like that. But I'll be like, oh, you sure? Okay. Do you know what I mean? But do you just on the topic as well? If I, if it was me. If I really wanted to go out on a date with her, I would pay for it. This is my thing. I feel like if it's someone that you actually like, mm. why are you upset about paying for the first date? I'm, yeah, not, no, exa- I'm not even like and I every agree. single date. And yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's great. I've paid for dates, like four or five dates in, but I've paid for a date. Really? You really like them that much? Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, must, I must really care about you motherfuckers, honestly. Like... But do they like kind of stop you? Like, no, 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 I'll take it. Or they're like, all right, yeah, cool, sort of thing. No, do you know what? There was one guy and I said I'd pay for it. And he was like, oh, go on, big spender. Oh, money. I said, I said, this man is never seeing me again. Big spender. I don't know. What I, it was bowling as well, you know, 20 pound. You're it's, be not big that you're it's not that deep. You're It's not that deep. You're taking the piss, 100%. It's not that deep. Never. Kara, how you been? Thank Good you so much man. for coming on. Thank we are live right now. <laughs> here, man. But you've been away for so, so long. Um, you you moved like a journalist for the last month or so, acting like B- BBC <laughs> National Geographic, journalist. just like going out and so. What? Where did you go? Where so did you go? The first, so I went to Madeira for my birthday for my twenty fifth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah happy belated like, birthday! Yeah, thank you very much, thank you. Um, and then I came back and I had a gig in Ayanapo, so I just came back. On oh, Tuesday, yeah. How did how did that go? <laughs> no, no. Do you know what? Uh, <laughs> it was a trip. Okay. But that was that it was business so i the show was great the show was fantastic yeah i want to hear it 
<laughs> I bet on it. The show, the show was good in it. I just, I just feel like. Was it the audience or the, or the man that moved in there? Or like what? No, what was it? It wasn't even anything to do with that. It was more so just the organization. But like, I don't. Oh, wanna, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But yeah. like, it was, it was, the audience were actually fantastic, and it was, it was an older audience as well. So the crowd, it was very much like, say the average age was like late forties, fifties. That's okay. the kind of. But I love those crowds because for me, if I can make, if you can make older Caribbeans laugh, mm. you're funny, man. Because these lot will look you in your eye and not do anything. They will let you know that you're shit. They will, there's no. Did you get that? No, no, no. Okay. But that's how, when, you, that, when you smash yeah, a show yeah. like that, you feel on top of the world. But your, your jokes, because you, when, you, when, you, when you tell your jokes, it's mm. mainly like, okay, there's an age category for this, for this joke. Sometimes. Some of my jokes are more like, but even I thought that because I did, I have a joke about dating, yeah. And there's a bit where I'm like, anyone dating, and no one made noise, and I was like, right, cool. Anyone in a relationship, no one made, made noise. noise. I was like, right, cool. Someone's lying, and I said, anyone in a situation, everyone went, rup, rup, rup. <laughs> I said, so you're not telling me this never ends. I'm gonna be here for fifty years. I was fuming. I was like, you lot out here with your sneaky links. No way. At the age of fifty, bro, I said, yeah, nah. Times are changing, man. People are getting older, realizing they don't want to be married to this man. They don't, they don't want man. To be married to this woman, and they're cutting. They don't, but th- did that have a different turn on your joke? No, not really. I think yeah. it just made it a bit funnier. Yeah, you're just there, like, okay, let me just crack on. Man. Yeah, because <laughs> everyone's experienced it at some point. So yeah, you know what I'm talking about. More, t- more time, those jokes, you're laughing at me, and it? it's a situation mm. that I've been in. So you don't necessarily have to completely understand or relate to what I'm saying. Yeah, but you can laugh along to what's happened to you. Do you um you see when you tell your jokes, let's say you're on a date and stuff, because sometimes your jokes are all mainly about like relationships and stuff. So do you ever like when a man go on a date with you and let's say if it doesn't go well, mm. right? And do they ever get worried like is she gonna chat shit about me on stage? <laughs> do you know what? Since I've started doing comedy, I haven't really had a bad date. Like I haven't. Well, to be honest. They're on the best behaviour. Yeah. But it's know? more so it's more so my friends that are like, don't write that down. Don't write that down. Oh, like, come you know on, I'm man. gonna write it down. You know I am. One hundred percent. I'm what? gonna make a video. Oh. You're a com- you, you got to. Do you know what I mean? Why it's all content. You? It happens, man. But it's yeah, no, nah, men don't they're not really that worried mm. about it's, I'm making it sound like I've been on hella dates, but like Yeah, yeah, no, no, but it's, have, it's not like your name dropping them. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, like, but like but, the ones that I have been on a date with, they've they've been calm. It's been great vibes. So I haven't really needed to Yeah. No splitting the bill nonsense. None of that rubbish conversation but i feel like you you like you come across as such a sweetheart do you know what i mean thank you very much but it's like i am but but when you're boring on stage it's like what the fuck you're best no. spraying them down do you know what i mean i think i think that's part of it i think a lot of i think that's say, that's where the comedy yeah. yeah that's where it's like it's like seasoned in a way yeah do you know what i mean people don't expect it to come out of my mouth yeah so yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah even if i make like a sex joke people are a bit like <gasps> Because they don't, they Too don't make, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they have a certain perception of me when I walk on stage, and mm. then when I talk, it kind of sets them, sets them back a bit. So I feel like it kind of adds to it. So I am a lovely person. I genuinely yeah, am. Yeah, but yeah, no. My my persona on stage, I guess it's just, I guess it's just a more confident version of myself, and I, it's just me saying what other people won't say, mm. and what I probably wouldn't say on my day to day. But yeah. how how did you start doing it? So I started doing comedy in uni. So I went okay. to uni for drama. Sweet. Yeah, and I had a module in stand-up comedy. Really? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did drama. We never had that. Yeah, I think I went I to the University of Kent, and I think we were one of the only. Like, I don't. I think we're one of the only. What, is that what all the comedians are at in Kent? There's bare comedians in Kent. I went there. I went. They um they invited me back there the other day. To okay. Do like a little to talk to a few. Oh, then was there? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was <laughs> bare people trying to do stand ups. <laughs> Stand up comedy is there's so many stand up comedies. I was I had Axel Blake on on here. Oh, great vibes, man! I wanted like I he's because I knew the the tactics of stand up, mm. the whole premise, punch or whatnot. We were mm. talking about it, and I do you know I might try it. I might try I it. Should. I might try it. I feel like everyone should try stand up once. But do you know what it is? It's not about the not being laughed at or the rejection. It's just knowing how or when the joke is gonna bang. Yeah, you can't always read it. You can't always. Yeah. Sometimes I'll write a joke down and the audience won't laugh where I think they'll laugh, but they'll laugh at another bit that I didn't really think that was was that funny. Mm. So that's you kind of just have to test it. You never know. People will laugh at. People will laugh at words. Sometimes I've just said a word or I've just made a face and people are dying and I'm like, all right, cool. We've got. 
let me work with this here. I could, I could do that. But honestly, I think everyone should try it once, man. If, even just for confidence. Just for confidence. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good way to put it. That's yeah. such a good way to put it. It's a great. It's a great thing, man. I think stand up comedy is one of the greatest art forms ever. It, oh. Ever, like just being able to, being able to make people laugh, for a living. Mm. Is as a blessing, in and itself. it makes you feel good as well. Yeah. It's quite therapeutic. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's man. like, yeah, yeah. I know that you've made someone's day, or like people will message me and just be like, "Oh, your videos are." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Damn, wow, yeah. Man, <laughs> great, oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, cool. So in Kent, that's where you started uni. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After um, that, so it was during my. So basically, during that module, mm. we basically had to write material and perform it every week. Yeah. So as my lecturer was watching me, he was like, "You need to do this professionally. Like, you have to do this." And I was like. I'll give it a go. Yeah, yeah. And so I literally started doing it around campus, came to London, I went to a networking event, I met my first manager, and then I just started doing shows and it kind of just went on from there. It's just a cheeky little trajectory. Your tutor, did they just look at you and be like, they, like you are the one? Like, fuck all the other students. Like, you are the one. It wasn't like, fuck all the other <laughs> students, you're the one. But he was very much like, I see it. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. see it in you. This is something that is, it comes very naturally to you and a lot of people. Mm. A lot of people are very nervous when they first start. And I'm that's one thing about me. People always say to me that when I'm on stage, I have a lot of composure. Mm. And that's wild because you don't understand that every time I'm going on stage, I'm questioning why I've chosen this. As Swear, why? Because like so, I have anxiety, like really bad anxiety. Oh. So it, it really does attack me every time I get on stage. But as soon as I get there and I say the first line, I get the first laugh, I'm good. But like, good on you though. If, like, if you've got anxiety and like, this is what you do. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's mad. No, it's crazy because I've always been a creative person. So I've always known that whatever I do in life, mm. it's going to be in front of a, a crowd, whether that's me acting, whether that's me dancing, whether that's yeah, me doing yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I, from from early, I kind of just knew I had to start putting myself in uncomfortable situations. So I, I just firm it, man. I have to mm. firm it. Yeah. So when you met your manager, what was the next step? So were they already managing other people at the time? No, no, no. So he um he used to walk, what, walk? used to work alongside all of comedy so they used to do comedy shows i think i know who it is yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. i started doing shows with them and then i started meeting okay. a lot of other comics because i started on the black circuit yeah yeah um so yeah i just started meeting other comics and they tell me to do these shows they tell promoters about me and then this person would see me and then book me for that and yeah it kind of just just took off from took there off, man yeah yeah talk to me about comedy central because that is big 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 that's yeah. a big deal no what? that's crazy you know like Wait, is it is it is it cold in here? By the way, are you cold? I'm alright, you know. Yeah, you good? Little breeze. Okay, cool. Um, so I got Comedy Central. Um, so it was after I got, after I got signed, but um, I got that opportunity, and it's it was just wild, man. I was just like, huh, what? Mm. Okay, because I'd seen a few clips obviously before, but it's not something that you can really comprehend until you're in it, and I didn't realize how much it would kind of take off one of my clips it hit 18 million views the other day that's like, so what? good yeah 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 and i don't think i've really taken it in i'm just like, oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. but it's it was just wild man and I, I think i was more worried about because when you transition from the black circuit a lot of my jokes is is tailored to people that relate to what i'm saying yeah so growing up in a certain household growing up around jamaicans mm. um so when you when you start doing it to an audience that might not necessarily understand what you're saying mm. there's a bit of worry there that the last won't be the same you have to explain it a bit more mm. but it's just about i don't know you can kind of change your jokes to where you're now kind of teaching the audience at the same time as you're telling them a story mm. and they can picture so now i'm telling jokes and people can see what kind of person my grandma is they mm. can see what kind of person my yeah. is, and it, it makes them laugh the same way but like, growing okay. up were you were you like this as well Growing up, I think it's more like, do you know what it is? It's, it's, it's an observation of your family as well. Yeah. It's like growing up, it's an experience. You're like, okay, cool. Now that you're a comedian, mm -hmm. everything you see is like, not every, completely everything, but like what you see, you turn that into a joke mm -hmm. and you put that down on paper. Yeah. So growing up, we also known as like that comedian, like that funny person and that. Yeah, growing up, I was always the clown. I was always, especially in school, I was a class clown, mm. but I was also very reserved like yeah in certain situations like i used to dance i used to go dance school so in that kind of situation i was very reserved very quite insecure like in the back but when i was around my friends mm. i'm the class clown my teachers i'm the class clown i'm the favorite because i'm you can't tell me off I'm making you laugh yeah. you know what i mean that was that was always my thing you can't i can't get in trouble because you're yeah. laughing right now mm. um and i don't know i think i just learned that as time went on anytime i felt uncomfortable i would just make people laugh mm. i would just I would just do something stupid. 
Um, and stand up's always something that I used to watch on TV. I used to bang Lee Evans' specials with my mom. Oh, uh, I've up. watched. Do you know how many times I've watched Lee Evans? I'm One of the. I was heartbroken when he said he was going to quit. That genuinely shattered me. He's retired. Yeah. yeah that shattered. Oh, you're a big Lee Evans fan. I yeah. love that man. Like me and my mom used to watch him all the time on TV because his specials were always on TV. Yeah, like, yeah. It's the O2 always. Arena one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. So, but it's just, oh it's never God. something I thought I could do. So being here now is just it's just wild, man. I used to always watch his stuff whenever I, whenever I used to feel a bit like down and stuff. Yeah, I used to always just, just whack on a, like Lee Evans. It's just funny, man. <laughs> it's just funny, and it was just the fact that this man Lee Evans was someone that put his all into comedy, and he's so dramatic as well. Dramatic, but, but for the for good for good reasons. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? This man's suit would be light blue at the beginning of his set, dark blue by the end. Yeah. I've never <laughs> never in my life have I seen a man sweat for a suit ever. Yeah, but he put his all into it. So he, uh, I. I love him, man. I so. wish he didn't quit. I wish he didn't retire. I would pay big money to watch that man live. Now. Same. Have you seen him live? Never. Fuck. Never seen him live. I feel like he retired before I got into it. When did he retire? Um, probably like three, four years ago, maybe. Yeah. So I started doing comedy just before lockdown. So it was a yeah. So oh, that's so early. Yeah, man. I mean, late is that late? It's in terms of. Like I've, I'm, I'm still so quite you, new. I'm you, still you're new. pretty much new. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm still a. That's everyone. I'm like a. And you've baby. come this far. No, I appreciate. That's it. pretty, it's pretty good, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm grateful, man. It's God. It's God. Yeah, good. Who, which I comedian know. do you look at and think, yeah, like who, who which comedian did you look at and think, I want to be like? Do you know what? In so I feel like it's different with the UK and with the US because there are so many comedians that I absolutely love. Mm. Growing up, Lee Evans. Um, when I was in school, Axel Blake was one of my favourite comics, man. Like, genuinely. I find Axel so funny till mm. this day. I think he's hilarious. Um, Michael McIntyre. Um, I've only seen his Wembley one. Yeah, no, Michael McIntyre is hilarious, man. Really? You know he got voted the unfunniest comedian? That's crazy. But I think it's just because he's, he's family friendly. Mate, yeah, I think a lot yeah. of people just, they like to hear the, mm. the swearing, the inappropriate stuff. Yeah. Um, Kane Brown is one of my favourite comics. Kane Brown is a UK comic. Mm. Um, I've, all of you don't go and watch that man live, man. I don't know how. He's just, you put that man in any room, mm. any room. It could be the most difficult room. And he's he's turning everyone. Everyone's dying. Everyone's laughing. They're cracking up. I'll check him um, out. Yeah, man. Um, Judy Love, of course. Yeah. Um, in terms of the US, Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, Bernie Mac. Those are people I kind of, mm. like, Bernie Mac especially is one of the people I used to grow up watching. Um, even till now, my dad quotes it. It's not funny, <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm trying to think that broke yeah, my heart, man. Yeah. Bernie Mac, yeah. And the funny thing is, if Bernie Mac was around today, that man would have been cancelled. Mm. I even watched one of his skits the other day and I said, Yeah, <laughs> That's it. Oh, let me try to remember his face. Actually, my goodness, on. you know, Bernie Mac. 100%. The name is the names, though. I'm not gonna be like one of them, you know, when people are like, Oh, name rings a bell, but no, I, the name. It's very recognisable. You see that? I, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers, man. Like, is, is that not ringing a bell? No, maybe. Oh, damn. You, when you Google his face, you'll know. But Benny Mac is one of the greats, man. Honestly. Oh! I didn't believe it when they said he died. I thought they were damn. chatting shit. I thought they were chatting shit. Yeah, man. That's breaking my heart. But I also don't like the fact that they're they're lying. Like, the, me the there are media pages... I didn't even notice this on Twitter, but you can like see if someone's if it's based on opinion or fact. What's happened to Jamie Foxx? So th they, I can't remember what media page it was, but they said that his condition is worsening. His family are saying his condition. Is worsening. I saw that on Twitter actually. Yeah, and his family said we've not put out a statement. So what condition? Uh, so like he had a stroke. Yeah, but we haven't heard anything since. But all prayers to him, man, because Jamie Foxx is one of the most talented. Oh, oh no wonder like people were swearing under the twitter post as well yeah because it's, it's yeah, I, like, I don't think i think it's crazy how people lack so much compassion and empathy like fa a family's going through something mm. and you lot feel no way to just chat it's shit and tell the like, news in it and it's fame that's like it's wild to me though like people will, will lose that's why paparazzi and all those people they, i don't understand i don't understand how you can do that job you see what Kanye did he hired paparazzi men to be with him as in, like, so. Oh, but Kanye's a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if Kanye's a great example. Uh, that man's, you know, not completely. Uh, you know, your impression of men is fucking uh, hilarious. 
I don't think you. I don't think you're deep. I don't think you, you're deep in it enough. I've been doing it for so long now that I'm just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. But do you know what? Because when you do it, it's like I think of. I think of the man as well. You can hear it. I can hear it. So I can think of some not, some guy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Everyone knows that guy, man. Everyone knows him. <laughs> Everyone knows him. Did you, how did you find your voice in comedy? I started doing jokes. I remember one of my first jokes is about how I hate spoken word artists. So yeah, man. Oh, do you know what? Me and you, the fucking same. Oh, mate. <laughs> Drag me out my house to hear like oh no matter pee because you didn't see the pee heart huh? what get, get out of my face <laughs> I'm fuming man and nine times I said no one knows what's happening but you man are there like mm, mm, mm. you don't know what was said you have no idea <laughs> but like in your mind you're like oh this is deep this is deep it's not deep man don't get me wrong there was some spoken yeah, yeah no no, like, no, 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 no 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 don't shoot me you know yo, don't fight me yo, like I've but, been hold- no 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 Kyra, I've been holding in this in for so <laughs> long for don't, so don't be long. Ashamed. Don't let them silence oh you, man. Oh my days! But no, but it's deep, like like this is what they're passionate about, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? No, like the same someone- and there are some fantastic ones. Don't get me wrong. I've seen some clips on TikTok, and I'm like, you've changed me. Like, you, <laughs> so this is talent. This is talent. You're not good. You're watching it. You're watching that. Like, and I'm like, mm, mm. I started clicking along. I said, mm, mm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fucking click as well. It's a click. This is claps too much, but like. A lot of them just. <laughs> so when I look into your just, eye, I don't see the time. What are you not? Like, and a lot of them just switch up the rhythms and they start moving their bodies, yeah, to distract you from the fact that they're saying absolutely nothing. Yeah? <laughs> nothing. I, I've yeah? been holding this one in for so long. Oh, don't hold it in, man. Don't let the people silence you. Don't let <laughs> the people silence oh. Um. But yeah, so that was one of my first jokes. Yeah. Um, I, might, I might actually bring it back. I haven't done it in a, in a couple I, of years. Oh, bring it back, no, man. No, it was, it was a, bring it was a it good back. one, man. Um, um, I, started, I was used to do jokes about my family as well. Um, but it was very much just like, they weren't attached to me. I was doing a lot of detached jokes where it's like, this is funny, this is funny. This is a funny situation. Mm-hmm. But I think I started to find my voice when I started to make my jokes, my jokes a bit more personal. Because people love to hear about what's happened to you. People love laughing at comics. Yeah. Like, they like to laugh take at your pain. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So people, exactly, people like to see you take the piss out of yourself. So I think that's when I started to kind of find myself. Mm. And <laughs> I started changing my jokes to, like, <laughs> just so people could relate to it. You know, like, this is what I've been through. This is how I feel. Yeah. I know I'm not alone. Yeah. Um, And I think once I started to get a bit comfortable in that, that's when I started to really... Mm my writing started to come, become a bit easier as well. Because it's really, it's really difficult. Like, I still struggle with it. And I have, there are definitely jokes that I haven't performed. Because I'm like, that's too personal. Because it's really difficult to stand on stage and just expose yourself to people. Mm. Like, people, are, when Kevin Hart has done all these jokes about his dad and, yeah, yeah. you know, like, him being on drugs and stuff, that stuff's not easy. Yeah. And watching it, you just think, ha, ha, ha. But it's really difficult it's, to get yeah, out yeah, there yeah. and expose the side of yourself that, it's yeah, like Dave Chappelle, whenever he says a joke, he's kind of like, ha ha, wait a minute. What did he yeah, do? yeah, yeah, he's like, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. It's like, what? Come again? Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's deeper than that. It's so it's, much deeper than that, man. And so I, why don't you try that then? I like, although it's there, personal, man. but it's like, well, yeah, yeah. Like, it's. Because it's hard. I'm not someone that really. I've only just started <clears throat> speaking to my friends about stuff like that. Uh, do you know what I mean? About the things that have happened in my life. and Really? Yeah. Why has it. Yeah. How come it's taken you so long? I'm not a. I'm very much the person that people will come to for help. Right. And it's only in a, the last couple of years that I've realised that I actually cannot, I can't keep things in here because I will lose it. Like It's just, because I'm someone that will bottle things up until I can't. And mm. then it's an explosion of just emotion and feeling. And it's just not healthy. You know so I mean? how comes you how comes you're like that? How, do you know why you're like that? Or is it just like something um, experienced growing up? I think it's just, it's a lot of, I'm, I, well, once once I got diagnosed with anxiety, I said, oh, mm. makes sense. But I think there's a lot of things that I've probably seen or experienced. And it was just a lot easier to not tell people what was kind of happening. Or like, it was just, I don't know. I just think it's a lot easier just to, don't to let, make people don't, laugh. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm not someone that wants to sit here and cry. I want to, I'm trying to bust jokes. I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to bring up the vibe. But you can't, you can't like go and bust jokes and then come back home and start feeling some yeah. type of, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and do you know what? Like a lot of comedians have been feeling like this as well. Yeah. It's difficult. And it's, 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 it's strange. Like, it's like, I don't want to say it's a pattern amongst comedians, but it's just like, do you know what I mean? It's, no, it is. is that like an escape? <laughs> <laughs> it, is. it is, man. I even said the other day, I was like, yeah, yeah, clearly I'm mentally stable. That's why I'm on stage. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, a lot of comics use comedy as, it's just, 
it's a like a release. It's a release. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's just this is the fucked up shit that's happened, and ha ha ha. Let's laugh about it. A lot of comics are like that, mm. and it's um it's a way for people to deal with it. But it's it's sometimes it's easier to make it into a joke rather than sit at home with it and sit and think, well, okay, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is why this is I'm feeling like this and X Y Z. But I mean, th- I've started I started therapy, mm. which is great. You know, how's that going? To be fair, my issue is that I'll have one session and then my schedule doesn't allow for me to have another. Mm. So I've had a lot of first sessions. Yeah. And they've been great. You know yeah. what I mean? They've been they've been fab. Yeah. Um really feel like I've learned a lot. But um I know what I need to do. It's just it's just about having the time to do it. So I'll when get there. You, when you say first sessions, go I've had therapy session. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was good, mm. but fucking NHS they only give you like a certain amount of days to Yeah. I did the NHS one. I did a, I yeah. did a lot of the NHS one, but I didn't find it that helpful. Yeah, because it's free, isn't it? Yeah, it's free. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just someone going, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah? And, that, and how did that make you feel? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how this walk. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they start like, giving me documents like I'm in primary yeah, school. Yeah, it's like, I need you to fill out this this uh, fucking, <laughs> what is it? What did you fucking call it? This this the survey. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no. And just tell me if you want to kill yourself today. <laughs> yeah? Just let me know. I don't need to call the police for everything else. Oh. Everything else is between me and you. Like, I'm just like, it's just not working, man. It just wasn't, you know, it just, it wasn't the vibe. But I feel like everyone needs to understand. You're not going to find the right therapist straight away. That's another thing. Because yeah. I found a lot of friends that. And, and there's a waiting sure. list. Yeah. There's a waiting list. Yeah, man. Like, by the time, it's like, do you know what? Look, they're like, oh, it's going to be eight weeks, like eight weeks um, yeah. waiting list. It's yeah. like, <laughs> Do you know what? I think I'm cured right now. No, do you know what I mean? I think I'll confirm it. I'm I've lost it this long. Do I really need to talk about it now? Do you know what I mean? It's just peak, but I feel like I think that to be I had to I had to fork out the money to actually like pay someone because mm. this NHS is it's not gonna work for you. Yeah. And of um, course that's better than the NHS. Yeah, exactly. An actual someone that you're paying and they, you feel like you're getting they fucking care. Money. Do you yeah, know what I mean? They care about it, but um was it at, uh, yeah, country, yeah. Well, at the end of the day, is it just more like them trying to be like a call center sort of thing at NHS, just like, oh, here's another patient sort of thing? Yeah, that's how it feels. Even when <laughs> <laughs> I saw a TikTok the other day and it was like, you go to the GP to talk about depression and anxiety. Mm. And it was so accurate. It's just like, how are you feeling? Oh. <laughs> okay, well, we've only got 10 minutes, so we're going to have to pick one of those. Yeah, what do you want why to talk the about? fuck would you add the time to that? I was just, it's how they are, man. Every, and I don't even blame them because I know everyone's understaffed and underpaid and everyone's struggling, but it's just like, I just. I'm everything. not going to lie to you. I tried to Google my therapist. I'm like, I want to I wanna put a name to her face. I couldn't find her. I just don't, I feel like that's breaking a few barriers. Here. No, no, no. I'm not going to lie to you. Listen to me very carefully. That's so like, funny. Like, what if I'm on the train and she's sat next to me? I would have never known who she is. Like, what if on one day I'm just sat next to her on the train? Do you know what I mean? Like, who am I to, Who am I spilling my guts to? Yeah, and a lot of the time it's um no 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 like, it's like students as well. It's fuck off. Because when when I was having it was like uh, someone that was practicing to get fully qualified. I didn't really like. Yeah um, yeah yeah. So that's that's why they don't know what to say because a lot of these they're, they're learning on the job, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. But, but like who am I? Who am I talk? Like who am I talking to? I don't know. Oh, her, I I've do. never seen her face. Like, and I they always say oh, my name's Sophie. Okay, and I'm gonna be here. Yeah. Like for the next six weeks. Okay, if you need anything. Just Try LinkedIn as well. I'm not there. <laughs> Do you know how many people will be there with that name? Like, I, the, the, my, my one know? had a weird name, but she sounded like a teenager. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, I don't even go to the man to spill my guts. And I'm just talking, ask, like. That's so funny. Do you know what I'm saying? That's so, so funny. Like, even my girl at the time. She was just like, go see a therapist. And it's just like, well, if I'm not chatting to you, like, who the fuck am I? Who's this, who's this woman there? Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, no. Some, do you know what? Sometimes it is actually easier to speak to a stranger. And I realised that speaking to a therapist, because I don't know why it feels a bit, it's a bit harder to speak to people that have known you for a long time yeah. and tell them, this is how I've been feeling. Mm. It's a, it, it feels a bit more exposing rather than when you're talking to a stranger. You don't really care. I mean, this is why people always like get drunk on nights out and just tell people their life story. Because oh. you can walk away and just know that that's not going anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's basically the NHS. Yeah, man. You, 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 they only chat you for a certain amount of time. It's like, all right, have a good day, man. Yeah, I think that's why so many people don't go to therapy because the girls' toilets is enough. You know? Swear, what? Well. You go in the girls' toilets, it's going to be going, you're beautiful, okay? You don't yeah. fucking need him. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. And I'm like, I swear to God, she preaching right now. Fuck that motherfucker. Like, you don't need therapy. 
<laughs> Heather just told me I'm going to be okay. You know what I mean? Like, so I think that's why a lot, a lot of people, therapy is just not as accessible as it should be, mm. unfortunately. But I think there's definitely a change. A lot more people are starting to realise that it's a necessity. So that's great, man. So so how do your friends feel now that you've like, you, you, you've spoken to them? Or are they like, where the fuck is that? Like, what? I think when, get, I, like, Whoa. when I first spoke to my friends, because there was a, there was just a day where, I don't know, I just, everything, I just had to get everything off my chest. And I was just, mm. I, I was talking to one of my friends and I think I cried like four times in front mm. of him. It was just like, oh. But he was, he was very much like, thank you so much for. Yeah, yeah, for no, that's good though. This, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it yeah. Was, it was such a safe space and oh. it was just, it was so lovely. So luckily God has blessed me with amazing people Good. around me Good. and they're super supportive and they're super lovely. So it wasn't like a, it, you realise that all the fear that you had was for nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil's going to try and play with you, man. Not me. What's, what's like putting you off the most now? What's like jarring you the most? Like in terms of, you know, whether it's, affecting your anxiety or is there something right now and like when you wake up you're like oh why is that well, like why is this happening is there anything that's like just bothering you i think my anxiety is the biggest thing and my my people pleasing i'm a very big people pleaser. really uh, i hate upsetting people i don't like when people are upset with me it's a very big like i don't know it's a proper thing like that's why oh my god you're so like you're so sweet <laughs> you're so yeah. sweet bro have you are you not hearing her she's so sweet it's so Kyra, funny, but no, and actually, next thing you know, you jump on stage in front of bare man, like, like yeah, fuck, 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 this, fuck this guy, fuck that guy, fuck that guy, fuck him as well, <laughs> fuck you and your mama. Like, it's just, I don't know where it comes from, man. It's just you know, because it's so funny because when I first started doing comedy, I spoke to a comic and they were like, "You're so lovely." Yeah, get man. rid of that. <laughs> what? Yeah, and I said, <laughs> I said, raw. <"Rah." laughs> But it's true because you can't, you can be nice and you can be lovely, but there's a certain point where people will realise that they can start taking advantage of your kindness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm at that point now where people feel like they have a certain amount of access to me still. Or they mm. feel like they can ask for this and ask for that or they can just do certain things. And because usually I'm like, yeah, cool, no problem. I don't want to inconvenience anyone. I think now I'm just starting to put those boundaries in place just because I realise it started to affect me. Mm. And when it starts to affect like my mental and I'm putting other people before myself all the time, it mm. starts to take a toll on you. So I definitely mm. feel like I'm I'm stepping into a new, a new Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. I think twenty five, you know, I think I'm just From okay, so from from when you started comedy mm -hmm. up until now, what has been like the biggest realization within yourself or within the industry? Um, or like even both the journey, like, okay, cool, you're like, I've entered this, I've learned this about myself. Mm. What's been that? I think being being in this industry and like with the pace that my career is kind of going, I think I've realised that I was a lot more insecure than I thought I was. Okay. And when you're forced into people's faith, you don't have time to get over those insecurities. You kind of have to. Do you know what I mean? There's no there's no build up. There's no all right. Let's learn to love ourselves for a year and like do you know what I mean. We'll stop posting pictures next year. There's none of that. Yeah, yeah. Everything happens has to happen at the same time. <laughs> everything just has to happen at the same time so i think my biggest realization was just that i need to start i need to learn to start loving myself before i start loving giving people. myself to, to the world you yeah. know what i mean because that's i think that's how people get mm. sucked in that's how people like start to lose themselves i always want to remain grounded know who i am mm. i know god put me here do you know mm. what i mean and i want to be here for a long time so i think it was just it was getting through those insecurities and i'm still going through them but it's a process man it's a journey what's your biggest insecurity um do you know what growing up it was always like just my appearance in general i was just always like, yeah like Kyra. Just, no but i feel like don't make me do it no, like, <laughs> you know what it is when you grow up like because i was i was quite a big kid in it and so when you i was yeah i was a big kid and i, I used yeah. to do ballet and stuff like that and i think a lot of my insecurities developed in dance school because when you're around these girls that are probably like picture perfect kind of ballerina yeah. and you just kind of feel like you know, you're kind of put in the back. You're not put in the front. Like, mm. it's oh, just a weird, you start to feel like when the when heart, yeah when the when the dance teacher's well, trying listen. to do your hair for an exam and she's struggling, you just feel a bit like, oh. do you know what I mean? It starts to over time, it starts to pile on you. Family members will make comments, oh, you're, you're getting fat, or like, like you need to stop eating. Or mm. da -da -da -da. I used to be obese when I was younger. Crazy. I was overweight. That's crazy. My mum was like, "This is more important than your education." You should, she was like, "You need to go to hospital." I had high cholesterol as That's well. Mad. Yeah, in year seven, I was like. 
75 kg, 80 kg. Wow. I was yes, fat. Seven. Yeah, seven, man. My mom didn't realize I got a letter home from the doctor and they were like, sort your shit out basically on the, on the letter. So you know when you- <laughs> You got a letter home. I got a letter home saying like- I've never ever heard that in my life. Yeah, I got, got a letter home. home. Yeah, he's saying that I was overweight. Like it's a serious That's health deep. issue. Why I'll, the first thing in my mind is, try being my size, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what it's like. <laughs> nah, that's peak, man. Hercules. Nah, that's crazy. Yeah. It's peak, though. And then, like, I was so, because I was so insecurity, yeah, yeah, embarrassed yeah. as well. I went to I went to go see the doctor with my mum. Yeah, yeah. And the guy was like, you need to take your shirt off because we need to do some checks on you. And there were, like, five junior doctors sitting behind me. They're, they're like, learning as well. They're just watching you. And they're watching me. I'm like, peak, man, and the doctor's like, do you mind them being here watching you? I'm like... What can I say? And then my mom and my doc- and the doctor's asking my mom like, "So why has he been yeah, eating?" <laughs> and then what do you want to say? Like, I'm a kid. Like, I can't be like, "No, get, get the you fuck get out, the of me, fuck man. out of here!" Well, I showed him my titties, bro. Get the fuck out. You see all this milk, bitch? Get the fuck out of this room, okay? No, it's weak, man. Bless you. Yeah, man. That must be so true. And then I'm there sitting quiet. I'm like hunched over yeah, in it. And then my yeah. mom's like listing all the food that I've been eating. Um, they look at her shame, like, oh my god. No, but no, but parents sometimes as well, man. Because my grandma used to feed me, bro. Like my grandma, yeah, used to as a baby, she used to give me a big man's bowl full of porridge, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah. And at school, I would like she would send me to school with a big pack lunch. I would go to school. I'd go like McDonald's or Greg's before school. I'd go yeah, Morley's yeah. after school. Then I'd have dinner. Ooh. And she's just like, spoiler, let let her eat, let her eat. <laughs> and I'm just like. You don't realise as a kid, you're like, yeah, let me eat, man. Like, you're just eating it all up, in it? And as you get older. I like, school days, at seven in the morning, people used to eat crisp chocolate. Seven up. <laughs> crisp bourbon biscuits. <laughs> yeah. And fizzy sweets we before not, the first class. We were not normal. We, we were fucked, man. And I think it's, it's I, I love the fact that this generation are so much more, like, they're more hype, they're more aware <laughs> of their health. We weren't, man. We were not. <laughs> And it's just so hard, like. But you grow up and you start to realize, you start to fix, you start to fix all those things. But I feel like a lot of those insecurities that you had when you were younger, they kind of stay with you, man. They they do stick with you, and it's something that you have to unlearn. It's mm. something you have to get out of your mind. Um, it is what it is, man. It we is were not is. normal. We were not normal. We were not. I can't believe that. And people were selling donuts and crisps outside oh, their blazer pockets. Oh my so, days! And I was eating it. I, was I bet you're a customer though. Active. <laughs> Active, regular, on a regular basis. You got them biscuits. Y'all know what time it is. It's ten o'clock. Do right? you know what I mean? You know, during Ramadan as well. Oh. You know the chocolate bars called Breakaways. Was like, oh my god. My, my, I was like, doing a Breakaways Ramadan right now, bro. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to break my fast. No, you bro. you breaking your fast on a Breakaway. On a breakaway. Nah. <laughs> Fuck that. There has to be something more important than that, man. You can't do that. That's man, pain. them used to come out with the, you know, the 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 ice buckets with Capri Suns in them. You man had ice buckets. One of the one of the guys used to sell in school, the, the blue thing. He used to bring it with him. That's really finishing me. Seriously, we had, we, we had a guy. Sorry, my guy nearly put Costco Costco out of business. This is. But talk to me a bit about your gig before you go. What's yeah, so for? um, it's for uh, Ola. If you guys please follow her, she's amazing. Um, she's doing a fundraiser gig for Sudan, um, in Kings Cross. So that's where I'm on my way to. Got lovely comics, Michael Odawale. Where can Slim performing the bill? Where Slim. can they find you? Uh, find me on Instagram and TikTok at it's Kyra Gray. Um, people keep messing about my YouTube. It's coming, man. It's coming. I've been. Oh, you don't have a YouTube channel. I've got a YouTube channel. There's a couple videos on there, but they're yeah, old. Not, not I haven't done anything recent. But we'll get on that. Yeah, I am. I am. I am. I am. Promise. Cool. All right. Thank Kara Gray. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Me, love, 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 love. Thank right. you.